And within the movie mix, filmmaker Toka Magbaro is alleging threats to life from an unknown group following the news of his soon-to-be-released movie titled The Herdsmen. A disturbing report about how herdsmen carry out regular systematic targeting of farmers in Nigeria. The report suggests that bandits killed 2,539 Nigerians in 654 attacks. The movie was first teased online July last year to mixed reactions. The narrative years are back. He took something important. That's why I have to take something precious from him. Toka now joins me on the program from Ontario in Canada. Many thanks for joining us, Toka. Yeah, it's my pleasure always. Okay, let's get straight into it. Tell us exactly what's going on with you and the controversy around your new movie titled The Herdsman. Well, um, I've been a filmmaker for a while, but this is the first time I, I will be going through such things with my family. This is the first time I'll be, I'll be, I've heard about people making movies and their lives being on the line and all that, but it has never really come to this for me. So um, this movie hurts men. It's, it's a beautiful story, fictitious, of course. It has some real elements, true stories that happen. So we try to fuse it. And I, I believe as a filmmaker, it's our, it's our call our duty to tell stories to unite our country to make our country forward and i am not a believer that you can actually criminalize a whole tribe the headsman story is a simple story about what's going on in nigeria today but unfortunately certain people in our country certain people in the society certain criminal elements or some people that feel, okay, they're defending their tribe. They are coming after me, coming after my family. So it makes it even more difficult to, to tell proper stories. So as a matter of fact, as I speak to you now, <laughs> my family is not home. I am not in the country because of course, I, I like my life, I fear for my life, but as a matter of fact, this movie, I, I am from Delta State, for instance, that's the former Bendel State. I've been in situations where you say you are from, you are from Bendel and everybody turns like, okay, most Bendelites are criminals because of one person or a few persons from that region, Anini, Osumbo, and all those people. So I have gone through that type of victimization before. So I don't feel Every hurts man is a criminal. Well, that's quite interesting. If I may come in here, what are some of the things that give you the signs that your life is in danger? With um, anonymous phone call, hidden numbers. When I, I think after I did one interview in Kaduna, it started with that, that, um, you know, criminals can, can do anything I don't want to say, okay, the person's accent sounds like a certain tribe. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say it's a Fulani person that threatened me or it's somebody from Kaduna South. Or I don't want to say that. But it started with those phone calls. Then I was filming in Kaduna. I've left, I, I stay in a, in a house around Barnawa area, but I've moved out of there because I've been there for like six years. I've moved out of there, but most people didn't know I've moved out. So certain people will go there to look for you. In a car, we're looking for Toka. Are you policemen? They are not policemen. He, I, we thought he stays here. So the security man there called my wife to say, okay, uh, some people are looking for you. So some people are looking for you. How? Then they went to my house in Abuja while we were in a hotel in Kaduna. So... From there, when I got back to Abuja, I could, we couldn't go home because we now called our security man, Benjamin, and he said, Ed, some people have been here three times to look for you. I'm not owing anybody. I'm not a thief. 
The only thing I do is film. Now, I can't say where my family is, but the very next day, I have to jet out to Toronto. I don't know how to handle this. I'm really confused. So it has to be clear that nobody gave me money. In fact, I went through, I don't use that kind of language on TV, but I went through a lot to film. The last day we were filming, we needed just 400,000 naira. My wife had to sell her phone. She's using one iPhone, something, something, something. She had to sell it for us to be able to fix that. Luckily, um, my friend Charles Huagbai did my ticket to leave the country. I landed in Canada without a dollar in my pocket. So if I've taken money from some people, ah, by now I should be lounging. Okay. Uh, have you reported this to any security outfits in the country? I have. I have, but I, I'm not on the ground to do that. I've done that virtually, but um, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, this will be taken seriously. I'm really hoping that this will be taken seriously so that uh, my people can come out of, of where they are right now because there's nothing as difficult as sitting here you are feeling safe and your family is somewhere you don't you don't you can't trust anybody i can't i can't I, I, because of course channels is is uh, the most recognized the most credible television station in nigeria that's why i'm talking to you if not i i will it, it's just difficult well this is sad we pray that you're safe that your family is safe. Uh, I won't ask about their whereabouts now because you don't feel they're safe, but about the story that you say is making people feel uncomfortable. Did you target any tribe with it? Where did you get that story from? Okay. Sincerely, uh, I, I have seen situations where herdsmen, in quote, herdsmen, they do a lot of damage they do a lot of damage. So there are criminal elements. My point is that I have also seen people under the guise of headsmen commit atrocities. So it is just a balanced story to show that, look, not all the headsmen are criminals. There are also criminals disguising as herdsmen, and there are herdsmen that are actually criminals. This story has to be told. Unfortunately, if, if a, a friend or an acquaintance was kidnapped and they called all of us to begin to gather money, we put the monies together, hidden five million naira, and paid the ransom, and he, the person was released. Getting back, the person said, the people that took me, the people that I've been with, that held me captive, are not Fulanese. He mentioned where they are from because they are speaking the language. So it, that changed how I think about this thing because the person speaking to us actually has a Fulani accent. I, am, I grew up in the North, so I understand the Northern language. I speak Hausa. So the person actually has, but the, the people that kept him are not Fulanis. So that is what informed this direction that I took that look, we need to let make it clear because we can't criminalize a whole tribe. They are not innocent. There are criminals amongst them, kidnappers, bandits, terrorists amongst them, but there are also other people committing crimes under that cover. It's just a movie for Christ's sake. No, no, nobody, nobody will watch it and say, eh, they, they are saying we are like this. No, no, no. All right. Um, many thanks for speaking to us, Stoker, and we wish you and yours all the best and please remain safe. It's time for a quick break. Entertainment News will return shortly.